Welcome to Slayer and PVM Locked, the account where there's no trading, no shops, no resource gathering, there's just Slayer, PVM and a lot of Death's Office content. All the rules and restrictions are in the description down below, so grab your task, gear up and let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of Slayer and PVM. It's been quite a journey getting here but we're finally ready to take on our first actual boss which is the giant mole. I've left you guys in suspense for long enough so we'll just jump into it and see how it goes. Okay so the first phase is nice and easy, we just need to do a load of damage to the mole. We've got our protection from melee up so we should be fine. I'm just worried about the prey situation, I think it's going to drop pretty quickly but we've got every piece of food from the bank in our inventory now everything from rainbow fish to wine so we'll hopefully not use it all but it's better to have it and not need it than to just die at the end of the day okay that's the first phase done and looks like we're getting the difficult one out of the way to start with the ones with the minions is really difficult there's a lot of damage reduction there's a lot of extra damage coming in and i don't have devotion yet which was a stupid thing on my part but oh well we're, we're in it now okay so we just need to use as many aoe's as we can if we pile them up and use some dragon breath attacks as well as using chain we should be able to kill them pretty quickly okay well that's about seven pieces of food gone on just that phase so it's not looking good next phase is the stun one i'm not too worried about this as long as i make sure i've got anticipation and freedom ready we should be pretty much good to go here we are just going to have to tank these hits and hope that we save enough prayer for the last phase because i'll Last phase is really scary. Okay, yeah, I was taking a little bit too much damage. I do need that protection from melee. And we are officially through half of our food now, and we have no prayer left. So it's going to be interesting to say the least. Although I seem to be able to kind of kite the giant mole around. I know there's a weird mechanic where she'll come and like hit you for constant damage but we'll see how it goes let's see if i can actually do a little bit more kiting on this phase oh okay i think this one's the one that you actually are meant to kite because it tells you not to stand too close to her so you just run around try and get the asphyxiate off if we can okay this one isn't too bad because it doesn't look like it's got the anti-kiting mechanics on for this phase so <laughs> we are splashing so much it's actually crazy once we get better weapons, though, it's going to be super easy to kill her. Or actually, even a higher magic level would do it. We're only sat at 48 magic at the minute. Oh, thankfully that's over. That took a really, really long time. So we've done the minions. We've done the rockfall. We've done the kiting. So this last one, I think, is the berserk ability. So you've got to be able to stun her when she goes berserk. That should be actually quite easy. We'll get a lot of damage off with the asphyxiates here. Oh, okay. So the anti kiting mechanic actually only hits 200 type plus damage. And I can get through most of them with only taking one or two hits. It might actually be better to just keep kiting around because... Giant Mole is hitting me for four to 500 damage each time. And if I can get away with doing this, I'm going to take a lot less damage. Oh, that's not something I'd planned for. <laughs> run out of run energy because we're only level 12 agility. Well, luckily we can stun her now. So we might be able to get a little bit of distance and get that run energy back. Okay, that's phase complete. I'm going to need to restore my run energy before I go for the final phase. We're going in with four wines and three rainbow fish. So... Let's see, it's going to be a close one either way. Okay, so we've got no prayer. We're going to try and kite as much as we can. Oh no, these little mole things are annoying. Uh, yeah, okay, let's finish them off individually. Another set of moles. Uh, they're just It's just the worst because the damage reduction is ridiculous. Okay, that's the last 10k health. Down to just the wines now. We're on about half health. Oh, this damage reduction is killing me and oh, just spamming those 200s. Oh, she can be stunned now though. Okay, that's that's good, that's good. Can we do this? Ah, uh, no, don't asphyxiate there. And that's it, we're officially out of food. Let's run away as much as we can. We've got 25% run energy. Let's kill these little moles. Come on, Dragon Breath. Here we go. I think this is probably the closest boss fight I've had in a very, very long time. Okay, 3k health. 2k. Come on, last bit of damage. 300 health. We can do it. Don't splash, don't splash. There we go, it's done. Oh. 635 HP. And what did we get? 60 blood runes. Okay, blood runes are good. We've not had any blood runes, I don't think, from anything else. I would have preferred the pure essence, but I've got another plan for getting those. But there we go. That's our first boss kill finally completed. That was 
extremely intense. That was very, very difficult. Oh, I won't be coming back here until we've trained up magic and defense a little bit more. Okay, so now that the giant mole is dead i think it's time that we actually have a look back in the bank and see what we've managed to collect over the past couple of weeks so jumping into the first tab then which is our miscellaneous tab we've got the key that allows us to go to the hill giants in the edgeville dungeon we've got our collection bag for our statue fragment pieces i can't quite remember what they're called we've got our ring of kinship we've got some water skins that we can use going to be useful for desert slayer tasks we've got a couple of buckets left we did sacrifice one for the uh, cook's assistance quest at the end of last episode but we've still got two left that we can use for farming runs and we've got our four jugs that we've got from the wine that we drank next tab then we've got our Reese's swords that we don't really use anymore we've got a full set of bronze armor the black full helmet is still best in slot for us at the minute we've got our steel armor that's there with our steel scimitars don't use most of that anymore we still use the the boots and the gloves but the main thing that we use now is the mithril scimitars that we've got there as well as the chest plate and the legs and importantly we've got our asylum doctor's ring i've not managed to get any mystery meat from it yet but hopefully it will at some point give me some either way it's still a decent ring for hybrid combat moving on to the next tab then so we've got our assorted leather items leather armor is kind of the best that we've got at the minute because we haven't got that much carapace armor but that's just what we've got to use we're creating quite a nice collection of arrows not that we can actually use any of them yet because we aren't able to make any bows or anything like that which is unfortunate but Ah well. We've got our throwing knives. The mithril ones are the main weapon that we use. We've got some tar in here. I think that's guam tar. I just need that to get my herb lore up a little bit. We're not going to be able to use salamanders as far as I'm aware. Next up we have our runes. Now we've got our first 60 blood runes that we just got from the giant mole. We've got quite a few other runes. We are running extremely low on air runes though and I'm definitely going to need to go and get some more air runes. Now I think my plan for getting air runes is probably going to be to do the rune mysteries and rune memories quest because one of the rewards does give you quite a lot of pure essence. Once that's used up though we're going to get the majority of our pure essence from killing the giant mole. She drops somewhere between 200 and 600 as an uncommon and drop so we'll just keep farming her until we've got a few thousand and then just blast out rune crafting we've got our bat wing and our spider silk armor and importantly we've got our battle staff which is the best weapon that we have at the moment for any combat style the next tab is where i start feeling really sad because it's the food tab and we have basically nothing we've got some potatoes and a couple of other low healing food but we've got anchovies is i think our best healing at the moment we can make some wine a little bit later on but we really need to find a renewable source of food once we get to end game it's not going to be a problem because god wars 2 drops a load of uncooked shark so once we get to level 80 cooking then we're going to be completely fine but the early levels are really difficult because there's not a huge renewable source of fish or any sort of cooking item that we can train on next tab is our slayer tab not really that exciting it's just got a couple of bits that we need for finishing off the creatures that we get assigned we've got our slayer and our reaper gem in there as well and the collection log but we won't be doing that anytime soon now is my favorite tab or at least it will be once it started filling up we've got parts of the scepter that's used in the stronghold of security and we've got four out of the five masks parts we need one more skeleton or goblin task i believe and then we can get the final piece still no idea what it does the other bits are just the loot that we got from the giant mole and a couple of bits of ghostly essence which will be nice once we get the ectoplasmator the farming tab is looking incredible though we've got a nice variety of seeds although we are running pretty low on them but those herbs are amazing we're starting to get a nice decent collection of herbs i don't get a huge amount of herb seeds so most of these have just been grimy drops from slayer creatures um, we're running out of secondary ingredients as well so we might need to start forcing some hobgoblin tasks or go and find some creatures that drop some decent secondaries later on one rule that has been suggested to me which i am considering for the series is that i could sacrifice say 100 slayer points to unlock the ability to gather one 
specific item. So for example, blue dragon scales. If I sacrificed 100 slayer points, I could go and start collecting blue dragon scales from the spawns that are around the world. I've got to put a bit more thought into it. It's going to be a little bit down the line that we'll do that, but there are certain items which you need in quite large quantities that it's difficult to get through PVM. So I'll have a look at it at the time, but for now we're just going to stick with purely PVM for the time being. Next tab is the crafting tab. Now this is a really nice tab as well. We've got a few stone spirits left. We've used the majority of them though, but we're starting to collect all sorts of logs. We've got our mahogany and our teak logs, and we're starting to get some willow and maple and yew logs there as well. The low level logs are what we really need, but the next time we're going to be able to get it is when we're fighting jellies, which is at 52 slayer. So we've got four levels till we can get them. As soon as we get them, we're probably going to favorite them because we need a steady supply of regular logs, and I absolutely need to do that. The spider silk was still got 75 left that we can craft at some point but i don't need anything particularly at the moment so we're just leaving that in the bank for the time being we've also got some bowstring for fletching we've got some bear pelt for making defense potions it just feels like it fits better in here but 35 green dragon hide is really good because we'll be able to make our own green dragon hide armor once we've leveled up crafting a little bit more for the prayer tab, not really got anything in there. We've used all of our bones trying to get to 43 prayer. We have managed to get a decent amount of charms though. 29 green, 19 crimson and 8 blue were pretty nice, but we've got over 400 of the gold charms. Now most of those came from the quest, but we've still got quite a lot. The pouches are becoming difficult to make because we need some raw chicken. The only way to get raw chicken is either through getting a bird's task from the Lumbridge Slayer Master which I have been forcing it a couple of times to try and get some. The other way is to get a werewolf task because they drop five unnoted raw chicken occasionally. So if we get some werewolf tasks later on, we can start training summoning a little bit more and that'll be really good. But until then, we're kind of stuck at level eight for the time being. Now the quest tab is interesting. It's also a partial rune crafting tab, but yeah, uh, doesn't really matter too much. We've got just miscellaneous quest items, to be honest. There's not really much to say about this. The, if I can't think of a place to shove things, they just go in here because they might be used for a quest at some point. Now, the salvage tab is looking really nice. Once we unlock invention or even high alchemy, we're going to start being able to dip into here and get those components or the gold that we need. 37 of certain mithril ones, and then we've got 20 odd of some others. It's looking pretty healthy. We're just picking them up. These would have all been weapons and armor back before the mining and smithing rework, which makes me a little bit sad because I could be using adamant plate legs and things like that. But oh well, it, it just happens to be the case that that's what it's like now. And final tab, the new tab is the archaeology one. I finished the tutorial, but I haven't done any other archaeology. I can just train archaeology as normal. It doesn't give me anything that I can really do anything with outside of archaeology. So we're just leaving that there. The reason that I did the archaeology tutorial was because I wanted that 500 extra HP. I think we would have almost died, or, or if not, we would have died at the giant mall if we didn't have that extra 500 HP. So I'm really glad I went to do that first. But that is it for the bank. That is everything we're going to go through. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode today. We've got a lot coming in the next episode that I'm really looking forward to. Let me know what you think about the proposed rule of sacrificing the Slayer points to get certain items. It'll be useful for questing, be useful for gathering some items for like herb lore and things, but I also don't want to divert too far away from the pure Slayer and PVM path. Let me know what you think. I'll take it into account and then I'll make a decision about it a little bit later down the line. It's a good idea. I'm just not 100% sure which way I'm going to go on it yet. That's everything for this episode. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Put your comments down below. If you've not checked out the latest podcast that we released, that's a new series that we're doing on the channel as well. I used to do it six or seven years ago and I've decided to bring it back just to get a few people more involved in the channel and see what their thoughts are on the game in general. Our first episode featured Sergeant Lemon, a clan mate of mine. Really nice guy. Check it out. I'll be sure to make some more going forward. And if you do want to be on the podcast, leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to have you on. Thanks very much for watching everyone. I'll see you in a a couple of days.